Guys, do you know why it is important to use a VPN? Everything you do online can be stolen or exposed by hackers. Is that what you want? And guess what? These hackers know a lot more about internet security than you and I. So why risk it? Do yourself a favor. Make sure your identity and browsing history are protected. I have been using NordVPN for the past few years because it allows me to safely browse the internet without being traced. NordVPN gives you the ability to stream content from anywhere in the world without restriction. This is perfect for sports fans. NordVPN's advanced encryption hides your location and encrypts all your data, whether you're sending it or receiving it. It's simple and easy to use, and you can connect up to six different devices at once. Right now, NordVPN is offering a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. There's no risk. Give it a try with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash sunnen or click on the link in the description to get this special deal. Daniel Cormier talking about Conor McGregor and says that Conor McGregor might have marked out for his own gimmick. Now, these are industrial terms. So let's make sure that we explain them. Okay, gimmick just means the character that you're coming. You might be the good guy, you might be the bad guy. Some gimmicks are real simple. Chris Lieben was just doing an interview, talked about some of the gimmicks he had where he used to dye his hair red and then he'd point, he'd point at the camera with one finger. But that was real. People would stick around to watch him do it. People would wait in line to get Chris's autograph and they would ask him to, to, to do that finger, right? I felt like it was gimmick infringement when he was doing it. I thought he stole the finger from Boss Rutten. That's a whole nother story, as simple as that might sound to make your hair a certain color and point a certain way that nobody else does when you do a photograph. That was Chris's gimmick for a while, and it worked really well. Then you have a guy that comes in in a certain outfit, or this guy's the trash talker, or this guy's the, the thug life representative, whatever it is, you have your gimmick. You use the gimmick to try to get over with the crowd. If the crowd is not attached to you and that means they don't like the gimmick, you got to go find a new gimmick. But that's what that word is. Now, when you talk about marking out, a mark is the person in the crowd who thinks it's real. The person at the professional wrestling event who is in tears because the referee who was knocked unconscious did not see his favorite wrestler being hit over the head with a steel folding chair. And by the time the referee came to, the chair was out of the way and his favorite wrestler was getting covered for the one, two, three. That guy in tears is the mark. That's who we're playing to. That's our mark. So if you mark out for your own gimmick, it's where you buy into the character that you created so much that you can't separate and differentiate who you are as a person and what was the act. So that's what Daniel's talking about because I have that same fear. I have that same fear, but I don't quite have the confidence that Daniel has in labeling Connor a certain way because I have watched him masterfully maneuver through a very tough industry. And I'm actually watching Connor do some of his finest work right now. Do you know how hard it is to be talked about if you don't have a fight coming up? Even if you want to fight a massive fight, if it's not coming up, you just don't fit into the media cycle. Super Bowl 15 was massive, massive. Do you realize why ESPN has not spoke about Super Bowl 15 in decades? I mean, you do understand this, correct? Because sports just don't have a mechanism built that way of what happened yesterday. It's current and what's going to happen. It just goes that way. So if you're Conor McGregor and you're hurt, you're broken, you're in rehab, and you're still a headline, you are doing something very well. And I don't know that I can't, I just can't quite blame him yet. I can't. I can't defend why he was at that nerd MTV. I, I can't explain that. Maybe he's got a little touch of nerd in him. Fine. But I don't know that he's marked out for his own gimmick. I don't know about that. And the best gimmicks are where a guy isn't acting at all. The best gimmicks is where a guy is who he is and then he just turns the volume up. If he's funny guy, he comes out and he's really funny guy. If he's the rough tumble guy, he comes out wearing a chain and he punches his chest a couple of times. I mean, but just be yourself with the volume up. That is what the greats would tell you. That is what Stone Cold would tell you. That is what The Rock would tell you. But you can't always do that. Maybe you aren't an interesting guy. Maybe you're well aware that even with the volume up, it's still a little dull on this side of the party. 
Okay, that's where you then have to go get creative. And that's where you get a little bit more shtick and a little bit more gimmicky. But falling for your own gimmick, it's very real. And we've seen this in the world of professional wrestling a number of times. The Ultimate Warrior, rest his soul. But the Ultimate Warrior was so into this character, that of Warrior, created by Vince McMahon, trademarked and owned by Vince McMahon, that Warrior tried to sue Vince to get the rights to it and even changed his real-life name from Jim Hellwood, changed it to Warrior. He thought somewhere through presumably awful legal advice or advice of a six-year-old that if he changed the name, he then somehow had the rights to copy and write infringement laws that he could be warrior, that he could take that, he could run that shtick, he could go back on to the wrestling circuit and come out and wrestle under his real name, of which now is Warrior. To which Vince is going to say, great, do away with the hair, do away with the face paints, do away with the arm dangles, do away with the music, don't grab the ropes, that's all the character that I have trademarked for you. It's just one of those things where somebody can mark out, they fall for it and they forget. They really forget. And in professional wrestling, they will try to do that within the circle. They will try. I got a guy. Levi Cooper, all-American, handsome, young, comes from a great family. Everything's going right in life. He goes into the WWE, and they have him wrestle as Tucker. Levi Cooper, who I've known since he was nine years old, is now wrestling as Tucker. I go to a backyard barbecue at Levi's house after he had just done an NXT show. The next day, we all get together. Levi's in town. His parents are calling him Tucker instead of Levi. But that is how you do it. That is how you live that gimmick. That is how you stay in character, is you take it from the ring to your real life. If Hulk Hogan was to book a reservation for a restaurant, he doesn't call up and, hey, I table for two, Terry Bolia. He will book it under Hulk Hogan. He will live the gimmick. And you can see how if you never separate and if you live the gimmick and the character at all times, that you can then do what Daniel's talking about, which is mark out for your own gimmick. I'm just not sure where, within Connor's stick, he had to be a prick. He was aggressive towards opponents. He would show up late to his own press conference. He would make people clamor to come watch him when he was about to warm up, when he had a match for sale on pay-per-view. These were the brilliance things. These were the entertainer. This is when he's broken in half by Poirier, but they haven't faded to black and rolled the credits yet. And the entertainer grabs the microphone from down on the canvas of which he can't even stand up off of and finishes his job, which is entertaining the crowd. So there's some real beautiful things and it's very easy to mark out for your own gimmick, a great gimmick. You will live it. You will become it. The great actors in Hollywood if they're going to go do a Western movie, they will go set things aside and, and live like a cowboy for three months to get into that role. The great ones do that. The difference in Hollywood is when that ends, you then start reading other scripts. You start adapting to go into the next role. It can be a very hard thing. Look, I don't want Sean O'Malley to do it. I'm, I'm only this much worried about Sean. I'm this much confident that Sean knows exactly what he's doing, but I, I'm worrying this much. Does that make me the mark? Possibly. Possibly it does. But O'Malley is another one of these gimmicks that is getting over. It would be very hard for Sean to get away from his current gimmick. He would kill a character who the world loves. Who's going to do that? If you've got the power of the pen and you're writing the script, why would you kill a character that the world wants to see? The other side of it is that character is also the person he's got to be when he's not in the sport. It makes it tough. It would be a miss for Sean O'Malley to let his hair go back to its natural color or to cut it and trim it or to not show up at an event with sunglasses and with some famous people around and act him like he doesn't care. He works very hard to give the impression that he's not working hard at all. It's his gimmick. It's great. And everybody loves it. It just gets to be one of those fine lines where he has a beautiful placement on the card. It's beautiful. Sean brings something to the table. There's no other 135 pounder who can guarantee as high of a placement on a card as Sean O'Malley aside from the current champion. The current champion will be put in there because he has to be. 
Sean's put there because he's earned it. That's where he belongs. That's where you, the masses, have raised him to. It's still a fine line. That can be taken away. That is done with the power of the pen. There are favors that are done to get those spots. If I ever didn't have those spots, the, the, the phone calls I would have made behind the scenes, the deals I would have been willing to make to make sure that I got that spot. It's a big deal. A big deal. He's playing with fire. And again, there's only this much of me that's worried about Sean. This 3%. 97% of me is confident. Sean's got this. He knows what he's doing. Fine line. Sean's a young man. He will go through it at some point. Conor McGregor's had a lot of success, but he's a young man. He hasn't been in this sport a terribly long time. And even as those years go by, if you look at how many years went with inactivity, he, he, he hasn't been in it that long. He's still learning. I just think that Connor and Sean, as they are still learning, I think that they're teaching more than they need to be taught. I think they're in great positions. I think they're a step ahead. But I can't dismiss what Daniel Cormier said where it does appear that there needs to be a more distinct separation between the person and the character. 